Hello and welcome to the Ventura Rock Spot. I'm Jeffrey Donovan and I will be your host. The Ventura Rock Spot is a program featuring original musicians from or traveling through Ventura, California. Check out the website at VenturaRockSpot.com for all the past episodes and information on how to become a featured artist yourself. And if you're wondering what's going on in the music scene around Ventura, be sure to check out VenturaRocks.com for all the latest. So on this episode, we have with us Alan Cookser, Steve Anisi, and Patrick Howe from the band Rev It Up. Thanks for being with us today, guys. What's sure happening, is. Jeff? Hey. So, all right, well, let's just go jump right into it. Uh, Rev It Up, you guys got quite a history. Um, to get things started, kick it off. How would you guys describe your music to our viewers who are not familiar with the band? Good old fashioned hair band rock and roll. <laughs> like that? Yeah. Pretty much sums it up. Good times. Good, Good times. Music. music. Right on. Good time, fun music. All right. Well, on that note, then uh, we're going to jump right into the music and take a look at one of your videos. So I'm going to start off with your promo video. It encompasses several Rev It Up tunes, and I think it's going to give the viewers a good feel for what your music is and what the band's about. So let's go ahead and play that now, and we'll talk about it a little bit afterwards. Here we go. Well, that was great. Uh, quite a number of songs. Uh, nice promo vid. When did you guys put that together? It was about uh, nine months ago, so mm -hmm. right. Um, was that uh, our second show? We did clips from our second show, right? Right. District yeah, Theater. Our reunion, yeah. our reunion tour. Reunion tour. So, and speaking of that, well, uh, your band has uh, quite an extensive history, and uh, you guys were around in the late '80s, early '90s. 
Yes. So uh, tell us how the band came together and what were those early years like? Take it away, Al. All right, I'll start off. Well, um, in those days, you know, I, I came from Missouri um, to play original hard rock in Hollywood. I didn't want to play cover songs. So um, when I was 21, I moved to Hollywood and uh, was looking for the right band. And uh, I walked into an audition in a garage um, with Bill Mickish, the drummer who's not with us today, and um, Bob Messini, the original bassist uh, that Patrick replaced. Oh, so yeah. we, we were uh, looking for a vocalist and we kept uh, looking, I think it was at least six or nine months until we found Steve. It was, it was quite a while. So um, we became a Hollywood headliner you know, we were always on the Hollywood Strip, passing out flyers and meeting people. And that's how we met um, a gentleman from the Chicago Tribune that followed us for a while, uh, went with us to band practice. We had uh, management as we were getting endorsements. You know, we were a cash strap band, uh, but we got endorsed by St. Louis Music Company. They gave me nine fourth level cabinets and uh West Tone guitars that, um, well, West Tone guitars, we'll just say that. <laughs> sure mics, sure mics too. And, and, then, and then walking the NAM show, we would send out letters in the old day, we didn't have internet, to try to set up these meetings at the NAM show. And uh, we were able to get an endorsement with Sure for Stevens Mike. And I got a guitar string endorsement, I think it was SIT, Stay in Tune, strings, and um, and then we had a clothing endorsement, Catch It Clothing. Uh, we had uh, local management. When I was going to ITT Technical Institute, I met Kevin Campbell, who became my guitar tech, and his brother became our road manager, Kevin Campbell. Um, so it was Chris and Kevin Campbell. Chris was the older brother that was our, our manager, and Kevin was my guitar tech. And we had a, a, a great crew helping us at every show. We had a we had the gear, we had the songs. Uh, we had a, a meeting with um, Ozzy Osbourne uh, with them. Jet Records. Jet John Records. Arden. The, John Arden, the, the father of, uh, sorry. Sharon Osbourne. <laughs> Sharon Osbourne's dad, right? And we met with him and um, we discussed a developmental deal. Jet Records was coming out of their payola scandal, so we weren't really comfortable in getting back, uh, getting a deal on that kind of terms. So we were kept looking. And then, you know, the Seattle scene came in and I lost uh, one of my parents, Chris Campbell lost one of his parents as well. And um, and then uh, the we ended, we ended the band at that time. And uh, I'm, I moved up here to the Bay Area. And actually then my father passed away and I gave up music. Uh, one sh short note is that my parents rented me a guitar when I was seven years old, and they had a bet that in two weeks I'd put it down. I didn't put it down until they passed away. And then, and then after I, they passed away, I went to build a career, which I did. You guys reformed in 2022. Right. So, so what, what brought about the reunion? Well, well I just was just about time. We just finally, like, all uh, – Bill got us all back together, our drummer. And uh, we all got on the phone and said, hey, it's time to play these songs. Let's get together and do get it. Get out there. Get out there. Right. And you and you did change the name um, from Cook, As, Sir, yes. to Rev It Up. Rev It Up was oh. one of our most popular songs. Um, uh, okay, that was my question yeah. is how did, how did the new name come into play? Yeah, so it was one of our most popular songs, and we always would play that as our as our final song on our sets and um it just makes so much sense that that's the band's name you know it's right. just um, it's just so easy to say you know and it, it just rocks so basically that's it rev it up yeah and then during our reunion when we bring in patrick uh bill uh, bob massini the original bass players in illinois and he couldn't join us back and uh i met uh, Patrick, due to the previous band I was in, that I was looking for another bass player, 
um, that band was called Mob Land. And um, I was trying to get him to to audition for the, the spot, but that didn't happen. And then that band uh, ended and, and Rev It Up came about in huh? January and February uh, 2022. All right. And since the 2022 reunion, I mean, you guys have already played some pretty high profile gigs. Um, so yeah, how, sure. how would you compare uh, playing out now to playing in those early years? What's what's changed? What's different? Well, the crowd's not built in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, back in the day, I mean, just people just would flock Azari's and the Whiskey A Go Go and the Roxy. And now you know you gotta you gotta get your you gotta you gotta do your leg work to play some yeah. of these shows. Um, but um, I I think the energy is even better than it ever was. Basically, uh, as the band, uh, we just we just like to destroy stages and wish we could do more. So I can speak from from just our first few shows together and just the response. And it's almost almost every time we do a show, the response has just been absolutely like. Wow, what did I just see? This is yeah. really over the top. The, the really cool thing about us is that um, if you're listening to us now, it's almost like you're in a time warp because we're time. we're playing all the stuff that we played back in the day, and it sounds fresh, right? Because you well, know, not many I, not I many bands are doing the, doing the hair band sound. You know, um, I, I can see firsthand it does. It does sound really fresh, and then yeah. that's really good. And you guys are very high energy, so. You know, I definitely get that. So, all right, um, let's get to another video for the viewers. Uh, this one is titled Nasty Girl. So here we go. <laughs> let's take a look. Yeah. 
All right. So that was nasty girl. Uh, that was a fun one. Um, any particular girl that was about or personal experience or just, just about just about everyone in a hoochie dress on Sunset Boulevard back in the day. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, um, hey, you guys, uh, you recently played at the Ventura Theater as one of the opening acts for Angel. Uh, How do you like playing in Ventura? Oh, fun. It's always a fun place to play. I played there a few times before with my other band. Um, yeah, I dig that place. Um, someday they'll get that uh, sound reinforcement down a little better. But yeah. um, so it's a great stage. It's a great stage. Yeah. Were you? Were any of you guys fans of Angel? Oh, Angel. Yeah. I grew up with Angel. Angel. Uh, Frank Domino, the singer, is actually from my hometown, Revere, Massachusetts. <laughs> All right. I tortured him that night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been a fan of theirs since I was about 13 years old. So yeah, uh, that was quite a show to see. So um, yeah, right they now. still sound great. So um, and as we were just discussing um, while we were offline there for a little bit, uh, from what I understand, you guys actually live uh, fairly far apart. And I assume that makes rehearsing a little bit of a challenge. So how do you do that? You guys all get together in person. Uh, or is it all remote or combination of whatever you can do at the time? The two guys obviously have to be remote that are down in Southern California. I usually come over to Alan's place here. We have it all set up here in the studio. So we get really good sound. And then, you know, we will do our recordings here. We'll do a lot of stuff here because it's just, it's just really geared for it. He did it, spent quite a bit of money to get this room, be soundproof the way it is. And um, so so for us, it works out great. So when they come up here for practices, like if we have a show up here, we all practice in here. Mm -hmm. um, but when we go down to L.A., we usually go rent out a studio and then we'll practice the night before and then, then we'll do a gig. But we usually practice here um, remotely using the Elk. And okay. that seems to work most time pretty good. There's some latency issues once in a while. Just depends on what the sunspots are doing, I guess. But um, but overall, it's it's better than not practicing. So yeah. you guys, you guys have actually, you have a very impressive amount of original songs. And um, were all of those songs from the original incarnation of the band or are any of them new material right now? That's correct. They're all originals. That's why it's kind of like a time warp coming to see us play. It's because you're getting exactly the bands you're listening to on classic rock now. We fit right in there because we were there with these right. songs, you know? Right. And um, eventually, once we finish recording, we recording all these songs and getting them out on, um, you know, Spotify and so and so and all these streaming sites. Um, we'll probably get some originals, new originals in, you know. Uh, but at at this moment, we're trying to finish this first record uh, release. Um, so we've got another video for our viewers. Uh, this one is a tune called "Touch and Go." So let's oh, take yeah. a look at this right now. Here we go. Yeah. 
that one was touch and go. And uh, from what I understand, that one was from the lost demo, uh, if I'm correct. And uh, I can only imagine what the lost demo was. Uh, maybe you guys can elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, well, towards the end of our uh, our band uh, back in the day, we, we did a great uh, demo. Al, what was the studio? I don't remember the name of the yeah, studio. I, know. I, I forgot myself. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we lost did. <laughs> yeah, so we did six um a six song demo, uh, basically, and um you know we were looking for something to to put out while we were getting this band back together, and Alan found a dat uh, tape if you even know what that is, people. Uh, yep. So Alan found a dat tape, and um it had uh four of the songs, not unfortunately not six of them. Uh, it did have four of them, so. I got the um, the dad tape and I sent it out to uh, get uh, you know turn uh, turned over to uh, uh, what uh, files uh, right. you know. and then from the files we got it remastered and um, big city uh, uh, music recording did the uh, remaster did a great job of what was on that tape and um, it's streaming everywhere at this time. That's great. That's great yeah. that, you, that you found it and that you, you actually got it converted and remastered. That's fantastic. Yeah, and it's you know it's it's half decent quality for back in the day. You know, I mean the thing's about what is it about thirty years old now? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it it worked out okay. All right. Well, um, so what what is the future hold for you guys? Where do you guys see yourself going right now? Well, we're just we're just ready. We're getting ready to finish this record. Um, we're gonna put this record out, and then we are gonna hopefully get some management, and get on get on some tours or something. You know, some some fun. You know. Yeah. Just All right. just want to just want to keep rocking. You know, keep that bucket list going. You know what I mean? Yeah. How many gigs lined up for the future that that our viewers might uh, want to go see? Car we're working Ooh. on stuff right now, but nothing's uh, concrete. All right, so I'm I'm assuming that uh, they can find that information from your site when it comes about online. And speaking of that, why don't you tell us where we can find you online? Go, Alan. www.rev, that's R-E-V hyphen it hyphen up dot net. Okay. Rev it up dot net. And the website will have all your social media links on it as well. They can Ooh, watch it. Facebook and there'll be pictures, Instagram. current pictures, and pictures of them when they were young, young guys. Yeah, there's some old pictures there. You're gonna get a get a, be a belly laugh or two. I, you know? I actually saw saw a bunch <laughs> of them. You know, I've been all up and down the website, and there's some classic stuff there. That's for sure. Alan, your hair was a bit longer back then, yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> My hair was a whole different color back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a lot has changed back there. So, all right, well, guys, that's about all the time we have for this episode. Is there any final comments you want to give out there to the viewers? Keep rocking. Keep rocking. Love, yeah. playing, love playing these songs and, and being in this project again. And I actually really enjoyed uh, Ventura when I was there. I got to walk around a bit, and there was a music store in the corner that I hung out at and a, a little Starbucks and I, I really enjoyed Ventura and I, I look forward to coming back. And and the, the team at the Ventura Theater were quite nice to us and it was a great time. Yeah. And it was great to meet you there. Great as experience. Well. It was yeah. a great experience. Yeah, we and had a blast playing with your band, Jeff. It really was a great night. It was it was really fun. Uh really high energy. I had a great time watching you guys. I was just blown away. So um you know Thanks big thumbs up. So, thank you. And thanks for thanks for having us on the show. We really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And hope to have you back again soon. So, well, listen, thanks, you guys. It's it's really been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, we're going to leave and we're going to leave the viewers with uh, one last look at your promo video as we go. And I uh, wish you all the best luck. I can't wait to see you guys again. And uh, we'll talk soon. All rev right. it up, rev it up. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jeff. And thanks to all of you viewers for watching. We'll see you next time. To the sound. I'll take a